Welcome to the Inovis Off-Grid Site Preparation Training Video. The learning objectives for this training consist of three topics, pole base, pole orientation, and pole placement. Inovis Off-Grid Light Poles can be mounted using either a concrete foundation or a direct burial mount. The pole will mount to either base with four bolts on a 14-inch diameter circular pattern. The bolt pattern must be oriented to true north for design and fusion series poles. Four level nuts and washers are used to level the pole while four top nuts and washers secure the pole. The exact dimensions and mass of the concrete base are dependent upon local soil conditions and regulations. Innovis supplied adapter plates can be used if you plan on installing a pole onto an existing foundation. Innovis adapter plates are designed for use with footings containing existing 1-inch J-bolts. When installing poles with a wraparound solar collector, keep the solar panel facing toward the equator and the back facing away from the equator. This configuration will provide maximum exposure of the solar collector to the sun. Most compasses in the field point to magnetic north. To find the direction of true north at an installation site, you need to know your location's magnetic declination value. The magnetic declination value is the angle difference between true north and magnetic north. Alternatively, you could use your cell phone if it is equipped with a compass that can automatically find true north for you. There are also GPS systems that can easily find true north and may be more accurate. Lastly, you can consult with an engineer to ensure proper alignment of the base with true north. Here is how to find true north, using Boise, Idaho as an example. Step 1. Find the magnetic declination value for Boise. Step 2. Find magnetic north on your compass. Step 3. Adjust the compass needle 13 degrees east. The north mark, or 0 degrees mark, will now point to true north. Step 4. Make sure that the J-bolts on the foundation or adapter plates are aligned to true north as shown. Thoughtful consideration must be given to the placement of poles relative to obstructions like trees or structures. Contact Inovis if you have concerns about the proximity of a pole to shading obstructions when preparing a site for installation. The learning objectives for this training consist of four topics, receiving, storage, moving, and unpacking. Packaging. The poles are usually packaged with foam donuts around sections of the pole. Cardboard sonotubes cover the entire length of the pole with metal banding around the outside to protect it from damage during shipping. Innovis solar poles weigh between 300 and 400 pounds when delivered. Lift poles one at a time. To distribute the weight of the pole over a larger area, Use wide straps instead of ropes. If the pole must be stored prior to installation, use an indoor location and leave the pole in its original packaging. An indoor location prevents water from entering the pole via the openings at the top and bottom. Unpacking the poles. To remove the packaging from the bunks, the metal banding must first be removed. Using a cutting tool, remove the metal banding by cutting the metal band. Caution: Beware of metal strap snapping back from the tension. Do not use a hammer or other sharp objects to cut the metal band. With the top layer of packaging removed, the inner layer of pole will be exposed. The inner layer of protective packaging consists of a few strategically placed foam donuts. Some poles will also have foam wrapped around the base of the pole. What can you use to remove the tape and protective foam? Utility knife. You can use a utility knife, but be very careful not to scratch the pole or solar collector. If using a utility knife, be extra cautious if you have to remove foam wrapped around the base of the pole. Scissors. You may also use scissors, but again, be very careful not to scratch the pole or solar collector.
The learning objectives for this training consist of three topics, pole assembly, pole installation, and pole troubleshooting. Begin by using the pre-installed nylon cord to pull the lower end of the luminaire cable through the pole arm. The lower end of the luminaire cable is the side that terminates with a pigtail connector. Next, route the lower end of the luminaire cable through the pole body. Use the pre-installed nylon cord to pull the luminaire cable from the top of the pole to the service panel below. Be sure to route the luminaire cable behind the system electronics, taking care not to damage the motion detectors when pulling the cable down. Place the arm on top of the pole and then partially tighten the arm set screws. The arm is a hub mount design and can be rotated to any direction as needed. Connect the luminaire cable to the mating connector on the luminaire. Be sure that the rubber washer is in place. Assembly of the flat panel solar collector occurs on the ground, prior to lifting it to the top of the pole. Any adjustments to the flat panel's tilt angle will also be done while it is still on the ground. After attaching the altitude base to the solar collector using the included hardware, the ground wire and MC4 connectors will be fed through the altitude base. You will finish the flat panel assembly by installing a grommet into the altitude base. It is recommended that you use a small amount of silicon grease to aid in the installation of the grommet. Inside the service access panel, connect the luminaire cable to the control board, as shown here. The pole is now ready for a system check. Note which battery technology is included with the system. Absorbent glass mat, or AGM batteries, come in three plastic packs. Lithium iron phosphate, or LFP batteries, come in two plastic packs. With the battery packs remaining outside of the pole, connect either one AGM battery pack or both LFP packs to the power harness inside of the pole. LFP battery packs include a gray temperature sensing wire that does not need to be connected at this time. As soon as power is connected, the red LED on the main control board should begin flashing. After approximately one minute, the luminaire should turn on. Disconnect the batteries. The pole is now ready to be lifted into place. Be sure that the batteries remain outside of the pole during lifting. Not all materials may be used at the upper quarter of the pole. Thin materials, like ropes, concentrate the weight of the pole in a small area and can cause damage by deforming the solar collector. Abrasive materials, like chains and cables, can act like a saw and cut into the solar collector. Make sure you have a certified lifting hook, a nylon strap, and an Inova security bit to open the door on the pole. Connect the hook to the wide nylon strap. Then, open the door on the pole and connect the hook to the top of the door's opening. Make sure the hook does not interfere with the internal equipment. Use some of the packaging foam to keep the hook from scratching the pole during lifting. Take the wide nylon strap and tie a half hitch around the pole approximately 3 to 5 feet from the top. Make sure that there aren't any knots resting against the pole. The pressure may dent the solar collector while lifting. Prevent the weight ball on the crane hook from striking the solar collector or pole during lifting. A simple method to ensure this is to use a sling so that the ball is above the top of the pole during lifting. After raising the flat panel and setting it onto the arm tenon, you will need to set its position. Make sure that the flat panel is oriented within 25 degrees of due south. If installing a design series pole, use the access door as your reference to determine the front of the pole. The access door should be installed facing south in the northern hemisphere. Set the pole on the anchor bolts with the correct north-south alignment. Feed the ground wire through the hole in the pole base to be connected after the pole is bolted down. Adjust the pole for plumb and tighten the anchor nuts. Next, install the four bolt caps over the anchor bolts and secure with the hex head bolts. Finally, revisit the pole with a man lift and fine tune the luminaire and arm positions. Gently lower the three AGM battery packs or the two LFP battery packs into the pole. When installing LFP packs, be sure to install the pack with the gray temperature sensor wire last. 
The gray wire will be connected to the charge controller later. Connect the battery pack plugs to the mating connectors in the pole. Do not connect the solar fuse at this time. Verify that the red controller LED is flashing and that the luminaire turns on after about one minute. If the battery cable appears to be too short, gently pull on the cable to release some slack. A few final checks remain to complete the installation. First, check the charge controller and main controller LEDs. On the charge controller, the status LED on the left should be green with an occasional heartbeat. Only one of the three battery LEDs should be on or flashing. On the main controller, the red LED should be flashing red while the other two LEDs remain off. Lastly, use the voltmeter to measure the solar array and battery voltages. If these readings are outside of the ranges as specified in the installation manual, please contact the Novus support. The most common errors at the time of installation can be prevented with a few easy checks. First, make sure that the solar fuse has been installed. The controllers inside the pole are another helpful tool. Each has a set of LEDs that continually report system status. Like the charge controller, the main controller indicates status using LEDs. A final check of the installation should be performed to ensure that water incursion will not occur. Water incursion can occur from such items as an improperly installed access door, loose or missing set screws, or an improperly installed grommet on element series poles. Water can rapidly cause component failure, therefore it is important to verify the integrity of the pole. Visit the Innovus Intelligence website for the latest guides and resources.